Just take my hand Make me understand Cause darling it's your love that I need Over the years, America's Got Talent has provided a platform to some of the most talented singers the country has to offer. Even so, some contestants who seem destined for success somehow fall through it and are never heard of again. There's no better example of this than season 4 contestant Kevin Skinner, whose life seemed like he could only move up before he suddenly disappeared. In the years since his dramatic appearance and victory on the America's Got Talent stage, Kevin has largely disappeared from the limelight and instead prefers to keep details of his life under the radar. While we can't answer exactly why it might have turned out this way, we can take a look at everything America's Got Talent didn't tell us about Kevin Skinner and build a fair narrative for his life. So, let's get started. Kevin Skinner was born and raised in Kentucky Mayfield, despite originally being from the Dublin community Grace's country. And it was here that Kevin, even as a young child, started fostering a deep love and appreciation for music. Cultivating this ambition for music and singing wasn't a solo effort though, and he was helped a lot by members of his family who wanted to help him realize his dreams. He started writing and singing his own songs on his trusty guitar when he was barely in middle school, and his main inspiration? His own father, Joe Skinner. Kevin grew up around his dad, also a country singer, who was a huge fan of the genre and exposed Kevin to all sorts of popular country music at the time. He was a huge fan of Hank Williams and helped Kevin usefully hone in on his ambitions. But even so, Joe wasn't the only member of his family who Kevin found a role model in when it concerned music. If anything, in an interview years later, he revealed that music was in his blood and that the passion he has for it went way back. Supported by his family and urged by his love for the art of singing, Kevin eventually started singing his own music all over Nashville. The young man hustled and eventually managed to impress his audiences enough to book a feature at the Broken Spoke Cafe, an opportunity that encouraged him and his artistic abilities even further. Another thing you might not have known about Kevin Skinner is that he's still incredibly attached to his roots. In an interview years after being America's Got Talent's winner, he still referred to himself as an ordinary working-class guy even if, at the time, he was the furthest thing from that. He described his run on one of the most recognized stages as one that happened purely by chance. He'd revealed years later that he was struggling and that he'd do whatever he could to get by and survive. And through all his hard times as a teenager, his music was with him, getting him by and surviving his inner battles. Kevin also went to Graves County High School, and sometime after graduating, he married his then-wife, Kristen Skinner. By the time Kevin auditioned for the show, the couple had already been together for over a decade and had two children, both in secondary school. And on many occasions, he's described his job before landing on America's Got Talent as being chicken catching. Now, if you're confused, rest assured you're not the only one, since both the judges and audiences were also left amused at the revelation. Since then, Kevin has proudly brought up the incident where he caught over 60,000 chickens in one night a few times since. Like Skinner said, according to him, his run on America's Got Talent was a lucky chance he was rewarded with. And while that can be debated upon, one thing that cannot be debated on is just how wildly beloved he became immediately after his audition. His rendition of Garth Brooks's If Tomorrow Never Comes with his guitar, added with his funny chicken anecdote, made him an instant fan favorite of the season. The audition video went pretty viral when it first aired and currently has over 12.5 million views on YouTube. He also revealed that the song he chose had a more sentimental notion attached to it than anyone might have guessed. Turns out, he would play the song he performed for his late grandmother, who'd been incredibly supportive of his musical dreams. After that audition, though, there was no doubt about Kevin making it big. All three judges on the show at the time, Piers Morgan, Sharon Osbourne, and David Hasselhoff, voted yes and ensured that Kevin was sent to the Vegas round. But if you don't remember seeing him perform at the Vegas round, you'd be correct, because the judges eventually deemed him talented enough to go directly to the quarterfinals. Even against competitors who were talented in their own right, Kevin could easily hold his own, proving to the judges and everyone watching him that he was, in fact, worthy of his victory when the fateful day finally came. He performed Bob Dylan's Make You Feel My Love at the quarterfinals, Always On My Mind at the semifinals, and Aerosmith's I Don't Want To Miss A Thing at the finals, all beautiful performances that ended up securing him the win. 
He revealed later on that the results show was the most nerve-wracking for him. But with his win, he got a headline show in Vegas, a million-dollar cash prize, and the subtle gift or curse, depending on how you look at it, of constant eyes on him and his next project. Another thing you might not have known about Kevin Skinner is how he ended up spending his AGT winnings. The show and Kevin came to an agreement about the sum to place it into annuity. That is, he was not given the lump sum of a million dollars at once. It was divided into partial payments, lasting the next 40 years of his life. In an interview right after his win, though, he revealed that it was so great to finally be able to give his family gifts and presents now that he'd made a name for himself. He got his niece a car and talked about giving back to his family who supported and encouraged him for years. Immediately after America's Got Talent, career-wise, Kevin had nothing to worry about. Every eye was on him, but he wanted to do something first. Before headlining his Vegas show, Season 4 AGT winner Kevin Skidder made a quick detour to his hometown, and he ended up performing for 6,000 fans in the Graves County High School gym, incidentally, his old high school. He was invited to guest star on one of the episodes of The Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien in 2009 and performed If Tomorrow Never Comes on the show. Later in the same year, he was also invited on The Ellen DeGeneres Show and on Live with Kelly and Ryan, where he delivered amazing performances that left his fans more sure of his success than ever. Soon afterwards, it was time for Kevin Skinner to finally release all the original music he'd been talking about writing all his life. After signing with the Cypress Tree record label, he started working on his music pretty diligently, proudly claiming that he'd written all the songs on his own album. And on March the 17th, 2010, Kevin Skinner released his first ever album, Long Ride, to raving reviews from fans. Here's what you might not know, though. The album being released on St. Patrick's Day Memorial was very intentional, and a nod to the fact that he shares his name with the Saints. In an interview after the album's release, Kevin talked about how he'd been a songwriter for over 12 years, and the process of releasing an album was made more convenient because he didn't have to write every song from scratch. But unfortunately, this very fact might have contributed to his eventual disappearance, both literal and figurative. Despite his fans telling him that they love his songs, the album did not perform very well. For all intents and purposes, the album sales tanked, and the singles on the album, once he claimed he loved, did not enter any charts or receive overly positive reception. Critics even said that while Kevin sang other people's songs really well, he could not write songs of his own half as well. Unfortunately, for the next couple of years, watching his musical career felt a bit like watching a kite on a downward trajectory. He got help from John Lloyd Miller, who helped him film a music video for the single Like It's The Last Goodbye. He managed to garner 1.4 million views, but the problem might just have been his lack of understanding of how branding works. Kevin would only talk about his new music on Facebook, but according to him, a worldwide album should be accounted as its own promotion. He also released a second album in 2011, one that you might not have heard about if you didn't diligently keep up with his Facebook page. But unfortunately, his second album, Kevin Skinner, Live and Unplugged, also tanked. The sales of the album were low, and tickets for his upcoming shows were hardly sold. While Kevin's career was derailing in front of his life, his marriage also went through irreparable damage. And soon after the show's end, Kristen Skinner left him, and while she kept in touch with him, their marriage was effectively over. The constant blows to his career and personal life hit Kevin in a hard way, as he soon dropped off the radar in 2012. He was reported to have troubles regarding drinking, and in fact, he spiraled to the extent of going missing in 2014. Though he was found only a few days later, not much is known about that accident either, and that was the last many heard of him. All things considered, while Kevin's journey may not have been one of the rags to riches successes we're so used to seeing online, it's one that's honest. Man, though we can't know for sure what became of the humble country singer with big dreams on AGT, we can respect the legacy he left behind after winning one of the most competitive talent competitions on television to date.